I think I thought you were going to stop saying the numbers. Yeah, I just I, I can't help myself. <laughs> I'm going to get it right. So I got one podcast number wrong. And now every time that I was like, I should never do that anymore. And then every, you, now, you were then, only you were only like five off. Only like five. It was like episode, yeah. it was episode, like, episode 10. We're on like 18 or something. Yeah, that's a good amount of episodes. <laughs> like, uh, oh, yeah. Back in the like said something like uh, uh, back in when this like sounding nostalgic and it was just like wait we've like literally done 20 episodes <laughs> <laughs> i believe uh pearl you're our first female guest so yes oh hell yeah yeah we we needed to class the place up yeah i was i was hoping well, thank you i'm <laughs> yeah. glad to represent over here <laughs> yeah we we were in much need of of classing it up for sure uh, yeah <laughs> Way too many bowel movement stories. Way too much. Way too much guy talk. So, uh, watch out! I'm practically a dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's about shit stories. So, Pearl, Pearl Z. That's what you go by. I actually don't know your last name. Maybe it's just Z. It's just Z for now. <laughs> no. so. uh, my real no. My real last name is actually Quillis. It's Polish. Oh. Um, it's pronounced Kavilosh, and um at the very end of my last name it's a silent z so i decided to take that z and put it in my stage name because a lot of people can't say my last name when they read it so that makes sense that's so cool that you have like a cool name though and so now you were able to like come up with a stage name from it so you have a cool stage name and a cool real name i have like a yeah. dorky real name and i had to make up a completely new name just because <laughs> <laughs> The Polish last name is what? Yeah. Is it? I'm sorry. Abort. Abort. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was. Yeah, I think he was asking. I think he was asking how do you pronounce it again? Oh, it's pronounced Kavilos. 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 Awesome. Kavilos. Now, are you huh. from? Uh, I mean, are you from there? You're from the States? Uh, my mom's side of the family is Polish. Um, and my dad's side of the family is Black and Native American. Um, I was born in Austin. I'm a true Austinite for once. That's someone you'll need. That's, that's very funny. rare. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, but yeah, so my name's hyphenated. So I took my mom's last name and my dad's. Just threw it all in there. Now you know why I shortened my name. <laughs> yeah, it's a cool last name. I, I'll, I'll never. Oh, to be fair though, I can't remember anybody's name, so it's not, not just. <laughs> but it's a cool name. Anyway, um, so you are at Music Lab right now. Yeah, did you guys just get done uh, rehearsing, or is this your, your personal? Um, I pay for this room twenty four seven every month. Um, I have my drum set and all of my guitars in here and pianos, basses, all that stuff, anything I need to create my music. Um, I was renting it out a lot, but because of COVID, I feel kind of uncomfortable doing that, especially like people using the piano and my microphones and stuff like that. You gotta be a homie homie if you're gonna be in my music lab room right now, but um, yeah, call it Pearl's World. This is where I do my thing. <laughs> So yeah, I, I totally get the COVID thing. <laughs> um, what is that behind you over there? What amp is that? Is it a Fender? This is my Fender Reverb, my Deluxe. Mm, wonderful. Like, yeah. Um, I usually like to play it with, I don't know if you can see this telly. Fender made this for like two years. It's a jazz master neck and then a telly body. Okay, so that that tele I love Telecasters, and I it's like it's one guitar I don't have, and I mean I've got like Strat and Les Paul, but that is like a guitar I just love. I still have never gotten one, but it's one of my favorite guitars. But what the Jazz Master is that a fatter neck or what's the deal with that? I think it's a thinner neck. 
internet. Because so is a true telly got a fat neck? Well, no, the it's because the body is like split in half. So it's got the thin neck and then the fat body. Okay. Fender only made it for like two years. This is crazy. Someone the person I bought my guitar from like seven or eight years ago messaged me on Facebook and asked to buy it back. <laughs> Yeah, because they thought they're an idiot for selling a Telecaster. Uh, I said no. <laughs> Where'd she do? Is that, it looks like a pretty unique color. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen that color before. Matches my mustard couch. It's a mustard. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, what's called a mustard color? Yeah. <laughs> mustard telly. So is that your main axe? You, you play a couple different guitars. Are they? Is that primarily what you play? Is that one in Telecaster? Yeah. Um, Right now, or the past few shows, I've been fortunate enough to go to Gibson and Austin and rent whatever I want because um, since I joined Kalu and the Electric Joint, I have just gotten that privilege. So if I need, want a different guitar, I go in and test it and just play it for shows and return it. But that's my child guitar right there, yeah. You say go get something from Gibson from where? You know the headquarters off of Congress? The Gibson showroom but over by the where showroom, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. I'll like go in there and try out guitars. They let me do that. Awesome. Um, have you ever uh, are you you're not with uh I guess you wouldn't be playing a telecaster if you were with Gibson. There's several oh, yeah. people off uh, so that are like Gibson, you know, with Gibson. Yeah. Um I think that I'm not really sure what the what they worked out with Kalu and the Electric Joint and them, but I don't know. We get to just rent whatever. <laughs> I see. So it's just through that one avenue, that one band. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I can't go online and be like, I want this trillion dollar guitar. <laughs> it's yeah. just whatever's in the shop. I'm not that cool yet. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because I have um, a, a signature Tragen guitar that I've played for, have been played for years, and I have this Godin guitar back here I'm with Godin but I play with you know Bull and Bully Los Buffaloes are you familiar with that band with that dude sounds familiar yeah he's actually coming on after you tonight um but okay um yeah he got a thing he's got a thing going with Gibson and we were able to play the Gibson room at this NAM show and everything and it's oh my god it was amazing and so yeah. that's funny because if I'm doing anything with him it's like here we're playing Gibsons <laughs> but yeah <anyway, laughs> you know? Um, so, okay. Speaking of projects, you were in a ton of projects. It sounds like, so when I met you, uh, I guess maybe first came aware I met you, uh, you played skunk fest. The first, when I put, started that a couple of years ago with Brown kids with Yayo, are you guys still playing together or no? No, we haven't played together in a while. Um, that's fizzled out. However, we did track a lot of those songs and I wrote, all of them. So I'm going to be releasing all of those brown kids. Not all of them, but probably like two or three good ones under my name. So that's basically what's going to happen with those. <laughs> because there's no, I, I, honestly, like I think you have a Facebook page and there's no, it's like, where is this? Where can I find it? And when you, you were maybe one of the afternoon bands, you know, kind of middle of the day when you played and people loved it. Like you got a great reception. And I mean, there was so. Yeah, many that was fun. That was a good show. We got some good pictures from that show too. Yeah, and a lot of people were like, oh, are you going to have brown kids next year? Like, there was a lot of, like, asking about that. And uh, so, yeah, I was kind of curious what was going on with her, but that would be killer to, uh, to release. Well, a lot of my Pearl Z set is going to be a mix between that exact sound and modern pop. Sure. <laughs> it's going to be a, quite a combo. <laughs> Where did you track? Did you track that stuff at um, 512? Um, I've... Uh, no, not Brown Kids. We tracked with Sebastian Cure at White Room Studios. Um, I believe we did one of, maybe some mixing at 512, but I'm not really sure. So you've got solo music. Is that, um, is that like under Pearl Z? Do you have releases with that or is that stuff you're working on now? Um, I'm currently working on releasing four new Pearl Z songs. I've already released one last year, this past year, called Silence Your Mind. Um, I tracked some of that at 512, actually. 
Um, and then I also had an amazing woman. Her name is Laura Jane come in from LA. Um, she was really mentoring me through this process and helped it be produced in the way I wanted. Um, she found me through, I auditioned to be like on The Voice and she was a talent scout. I did not audition, she asked me to. And I ended up hating it, but sending her my music. And so after that, she worked for me. She tours with Enrique Iglesias and she's been like one of the most inspirational women in my opinion out in LA. Um, so I was honored to work with her for that. And uh, since then, I don't use COVID as an excuse, but it definitely set me back with some of my plans. So um, I decided to compile a new Pearl Z album. And I really did some like deep searching within my laptop and all the stuff I've produced on Ableton and other songs I haven't released and compiled together some good stuff. So I'm hoping to release it in 2021, you know, if the world doesn't blow up before then. <laughs> Right. If we're still here, we'll uh, yeah. we're all looking forward to that album. Uh, well, that's cool. So the, the what was this? Uh, uh, what would you say her name was? Her name's Laura Jane Jones. And she invited you to be on The Voice, or you auditioned, or you you were on. I was working. I was working at a uh, music school, the Musicians Woodshed, and uh, she was a talent scout, just looking for people in Austin to go audition, and wow. they all suggested me. And I originally said no, which might have been the best choice ever because she was intrigued. Like, why the hell are you not doing this? Because, <laughs> I mean, but I've seen. Not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In fact, I was like, I don't want to do this, but I but I looked her up and I was like, wow, you're awesome. So give my music a chance. Here's some <laughs> MP3s. And she did give it a listen and we just developed an awesome relationship. And yeah. She's oh, definitely cool. helped me. And I did end up going through several rounds of The Voice. Um, it was quite an experience, totally different than what I'm used to. Um, like meeting people in the waiting room who like audition for American Idol and stuff every year and they travel to cities. And it's different than the people you've probably interviewed and stuff. <laughs> and, well, uh, that, were, that were used to. It's just. Yeah, right. Very like pop or like pop icon stardom type yeah I think as opposed to you know in the local community playing the bars and the and the you know writing with bands whole scene I guess you know I'm sure there's a yeah I mean even even the larger scale performances I've done it's just never it's a lot of it is about looks and not talent in those first stages and I only um I mean I know that from before but I did see lists and reasons why people were getting turned down and it was ridiculous <laughs> Uh, oh really oh yeah wow. yeah well now is all this is it televised or are you just going through the process of like the auditioning and playing or um the last audition i did was televised but that's like preliminary is crap like but the show itself yeah obviously right right and back to so when the talent scout that found you that that's actually really intriguing to me that someone was actually here scouting talent like that almost feels like a thing of the past right so that's really cool yeah it's kind of discovered in that sense yeah and i will say like especially when they're from out of town they'll you know they don't know exactly who to hit up unless they're looking at numbers or going to schools music schools with younger people who are eager to do something so yeah, the what'd you say it was called Wood Woodshed, right? Music school? The musicians woodshed. Yeah. Is that in Lakeway? Where is that? Yeah, it's in Lakeway. Yeah, I feel like I heard about that place. Um, and I um I'm sure I've met some people that have that have worked there over I there. yeah, there's so many people that are have circulated through that place. Um I worked there very briefly though. Now I teach lessons out of my room. What where are you at right now? Yeah, if it's like guitar, I'll teach guitar, bass. Um, usually people, I mean, obviously they come in masked and all of that. The only thing I'm trying to figure out is doing my voice lessons and how to be safe right now. Yeah, we, had a, we had a guest on here that had a, a music school and they were doing a lot of online lessons, which a lot of places yeah. have done, but still opening back up. And he was saying that they actually had a shower curtain, a clear shower curtain device. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and they still would wear like the shields 
but like which just kind of seems weird with i guess if you're singing a mic but i mean i thought that was like pretty smart and then you got kind of a divider in the room that way i might steal that idea (laughs) that's a good idea yeah yeah it's funny like how many musicians we all you know seem to teach it sometime or another in some capacity you know and uh have you done the online stuff or is it all in person um i have done online stuff um however the only difficulty with some of it like i can't teach certain young young students because they get too frustrated like if you're showing them guitar you can't really see which fingers are on which frets and strings like a you know a six seven eight year old is going to get really annoyed with that stuff so it's hard to do that virtually through zoom plus um, the side of that is that you can hit mute and drop f-bombs when they frustrate you so that's the cool part <laughs> yeah <laughs> I do speak a lot of French. <laughs> do you have a uh, do you have a preference in like any like adults or kids or you kind of whatever in terms of teaching? Um, I think that I learn a lot from both when teaching. Actually, yeah. um, I've had I've had great experiences teaching adults too because um, it makes me feel a little bit more confident in myself because I'll teach people who are older than me. And sometimes, you know, they don't want to be taught by somebody who's older than them. (laughs) I mean, sorry, younger than them. And, you know, that's kind of weird. That was weird to me at first. But then I was able to be like, you know what, girl, you know what you're talking about. So (laughs) just do it. And then with the younger children, it's uh, really nice to be able to set an example for them in a good way, especially younger girls that I'm teaching. Um, And also... I have one student who has a stutter, but she doesn't stutter when we sing, which is super inspiring for me. So it's nice to see music work in a good way like that. Yeah, I think with anybody, I mean, I would say kids, but also I've seen it with adults too. Like sometimes it just can be so life changing and inspiring. And I, that's one nice thing about it is it's kind of that I think the teacher gets that too. You know, it's reciprocal. Like you feel good about it. And, I learn a lot just from teaching, right? You have to break down a lot of things and like analyze and think. And sometimes it makes, I think makes you better in in certain ways, you know? Right. That's part of the reason why I left the musician's woodshed because I was getting a lot of students who were being forced to do lessons after school and they did not want to be there. You know, it was really like, okay, we're going to school and we're dropping you off here. And then I'm going to get you some Chick-fil-A and then I'm going to pick you up. And I'm going to ask your teacher if you practiced and I know you didn't. (laughs) And like now (laughs) on Uh, my own, (laughs) I can like have a lot of kids who are eager and I, and they care. So more fun to teach. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, that's it. That's with everything. I think it's like, you can only do so much. Everything is kind of a two way deal. And when, when, and that's the most, it's so inspiring when you get a student who wants it and they're excited and you see them progress and like, it's just, that yeah. makes me excited, you know, so it's shit. And then you end up, sometimes you got students where you're like, dude, like you're, you play this better than me now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. I had one student. Oh my God. She was writing like four songs a day on ukulele. And I was helping her like sing more in tune, but she was busting out great songs, song after song after song, so much better than I could ever do. And that is totally inspiring. And I'm like, dude, you're like 14 or 15. What am I doing with my life? <laughs> yeah, I know it's crazy. Like I've had kids where you're, I'm like, okay, like I started playing guitar at the age you are now and you're already fucking amazing. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I don't know. I haven't been playing. I wish I had started earlier, honestly. Did you start playing? Um, I started, let's see. I think it's been seven years. Oh, wow. Okay. But I've only recently said I pl- I'm a guitarist. Do you, it, well, I guess you're a singer first. Have you always been a vocalist? Yeah. Yeah. I was in choir and, you know, lame high school acapella groups. And then at Texas State, I was in the uh, Texas State Women's Choir. And I was going to go down the classical route just because of degree purposes. But then I realized I could make more money having more fun playing rock and roll. (laughs) Like operatic sort of singing or? Um, Yeah. And just like choir, like singing in Latin and Spanish and French. Oh, wow. So are you, um, 
you speak multiple languages? I can sing in multiple languages. <laughs> I'm fluent in sign language and I can understand a lot of Spanish. But... That's awesome. I literally it's just just a white schmuck who speaks English. Oh, you you can you can Nothing say cool. beer and drunk in Spanish. Uh, Baracho, <laughs> that's the one word I I learned. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It's all like well, Baracho. Oop, lo siento. Amazing. <laughs> lo siento. Look how white I am when I say lo siento. Yeah, your accent. So, I'm so Baracho right now. Lo siento. <laughs> lo siento. <laughs> Um, yeah, you know, I had, um, I'm not a singer, but I started just saying, fuck it, you know, and, and singing and have gotten more comfortable over the years and, you know, kind of know where my comfort zones are and where they aren't. But, um, where the hell was I going with this? Oh yeah. <laughs> years ago, I took a vocal class and it was really cool because yeah, we would sing things in foreign and, you know, different languages. And that was, so I imagine after years of doing that, you sort of just, yeah, yeah, it's cool. Um, I used to be so freaking terrified, though, to sing outside of choir. Like, I actually started guitar lessons with Van Wilkes. I don't know if you know who that is. Yeah, he was my first guitar teacher. He taught me for about a year. And uh, towards the end, he was just like, Pearl, you got to just sing. Like, stop <laughs> being self-conscious. Like, you didn't do the last. I wouldn't even go to the recital because he wanted me to sing. Hey Joe, because I could play it on guitar. It's like the Jimi Hendrix. And so basically I got so tired of him asking me one day and was just like, fuck it, I'm just gonna sing. And he was like, Oh my God, see, what have you been doing? <laughs> and then I was like, Oh yeah, I guess I can sing and play guitar and have it not be like, no, 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 no. <laughs> like totally not what I really like doing. So <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, la, la, la. <laughs> Holy shit, she's a rock star. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in, in terms of like when I've seen you, I mean, uh, you know, being charismatic is not a problem. And I think it's interesting how oftentimes artists, musicians, comedians, whatever the case may be, a lot, you would never know, like are very come from a very sort of shy, maybe introverted place. And then the stage becomes that place where they let it all go and you know oh my gosh i could never do that but and a lot of times those 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 people are, are actually kind of the shy ones you know i'm definitely under that category 500 percent um i i still kind of struggle with stage fright however i've gotten really good at controlling it especially with the bigger shows i've had to play you know having a conversation with myself like you can't let this stop you from doing all of this other cool ass shit <laughs> you know and so before I would literally my palms would get sweaty I could hear my heart beating like stupid simple shows like small rock like high school pearl <laughs> that's funny because I feel like now I feel like god knows I would never be on the voice for American Idol but if I was in one of those situations I would think I'd probably be fucking so nervous that's got to be so nerve-wracking it's it amazing. is it people. is before <laughs> but I, I also but i also say a lot of times if i'm playing at a, a a big show and there's a big lively crowd and i'm with the band and i feel like I've, I've had a few times on stage where i'm like oh my god i'm actually like a little nervous shaky it's weird but it's pretty rare like usually i feel super comfortable but if you put me with just like now sing us a song on the piano by yourself i i hate it i'm terrified are you like that? Yeah, or is yeah. there safety in numbers? Um, I um actually, you know what? It's safety in me being extra prepared. I just have to be extra prepared and be playing the parts that I'm playing so that I can perform, if that makes sense. Like to totally just like not care about the parts anymore. Like, oh, I think I go to like the A chord or the like G chord right now, it's just like, that's going to be muscle memory, like playing chopsticks on the piano, you know? Yeah. I want it to be like that so that I can feel confident and like look at the crowd, actually engage and do all of that stuff. And I realized before I wasn't really prepping myself as much as I could have been. However, I didn't know how serious I was about it when I was very nervous. 
I mean, you're, it's, that's so obvious, but it's been so, <laughs> so true. Like it's, it's everything really then, because then you're able to feel comfortable with what you're doing and you can, yeah. yeah. You know, I always say this too. It's like, you can, there's that, it's almost an intangible, but you can, it's like when you're recording something and that first you're learning something, you're doing a demo, you're doing, you're performing something and you can almost tell when it's being kind of thought or when it's just being, when it's, totally. when it's being performed yeah. as opposed to when it's being like thought out, you know? Mm -hmm. And some of the most iconic, those beautiful songs were totally felt out. <laughs> like they weren't thought out. It wasn't robotic. Um, but I mean, I've had people ask me like why I, when I was really struggling, why I torture myself like that. But honestly, my answer is just like, I wish there like wasn't that feeling that's like, Pearl, you need to do this. Pearl, this is your next move. Pearl, you can't function in life without writing another song today. <laughs> like stuff like that. It's like the back, back of my mind being like, Pearl, Pearl, you got to get this done. So like, that's the reason why I choose to get over my stage fright. I mean, that's like being an artist, right? I guess so. <laughs> so tell us about some of your projects then. Is there anyone that's sort of a, a more of a main one that you play with more often than others that you're in several. So just kind of um, give us the uh, right. Definitely right now it's Kalu and the electric joint. Um, I joined that band at the beginning of this year. Um, and it started out great. We played a few shows in new Orleans, but then the pandemic happened. So we took a bit of a break and, um, we're finally playing shows again. Uh, we just played the Blues on the Green at Stubbs uh, like a week and a half ago. Um, before that, we did a couple live streams for a private event. And then uh, next month, we're going to do a show on the 19th, December 19th at Empire Control Room with the Deer. Um, but they're definitely the most busiest. Uh, they are releasing a new record, and that's really what they've been working on all summer. I got to be a part of it, which I'm very grateful to have been. And uh, watching their songwriting process definitely inspired mine as well for my Pearl Z stuff. But yeah, most of the things I am practicing and working on is all for Kalu and the Electric Joint right now. And the writing process for that in this new album, was that, uh, was that a lot of that collective in a room together? Um, a lot of remote sort of stuff like that? It's mostly JT and Kalu that are doing the bulks of these songs. But I mean, we'll jam and record something and then they make it into a song themselves like later on. I'm featured uh, playing synth piano on uh, their new single Mirror, which just came out. Um, but as far as like, the, I mean, the core of the band is JT and Kalu for sure. Um, and where was that tracked at? Huh? Where's that recorded at? Oh, it's at uh, JT's personal studio, which is in a house. Um, we all definitely could not enter the studio until we were all quarantined and knew we were safe to go inside. And so, yeah, then we got to do rehearsals. Um, we also were allowed to rent out Antones and do some like real dress rehearsals so that we could all get our sounds EQ'd properly. So that when we did do the big show at Stubbs, we could just, we knew what we were doing immediately, which is so helpful for me because I play the most instruments in that band. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, have you ever seen um, Dweezil Zappa? Like it was, was touring a Zappa plays Zappa, but do you, yeah. <laughs> I mean, everyone in that fucking group plays like 10 instruments and it's just, Oh know, yeah. And I'm, Drawing a blank on the girl's name now, but I, every time I see them, she's she's like one of the consistent ones, and she's just so amazing because she'll go, she sing, everyone sings, mm -hmm. and then she goes from the keys, and then she's playing saxophone. It's just like, and she's amazing at all of them. So, what are you playing in that band? You're singing, you're playing keys, synth. What else do you do? Um, I'm playing a Rhodes piano, which is heavy as crap to carry. We have to carry that everywhere. So heavy, it cannot turn on its side at all because the whole thing will go out of tune but it's really cool to play. And then I stack a MIDI controller on top of that and then um, play through complete control on a laptop for synth sounds and like certain sounds that are specific to each song that's on the record, in the record. Um, 
and then I'm playing my guitar. I have to play two guitars because of tuning changes in that band. Um, but yeah, so two pianos, two guitars, two pedal boards, <laughs> and I sing. <laughs> wow. Do you have a roadie? Oh my gosh, we've hired a couple roadies and it was like the best shows ever. It's so uh, stress-free. We don't do it all the time, but I finally understand the necessity. Uh, no kidding. I mean, it's one thing if you're like playing a horn <laughs> or you're the same, yeah. right? But you're like... I mean, but also, I mean, also what I'm doing is seriously, like in between songs, I have to trigger the MIDI, change the setting on the roads, change settings on my guitars, and then retune the whole guitar to whatever tuning they freaking tracked it in, which is crazy because JT is a crazy guitarist. <laughs> so I have to deal with his crazy brain while I'm also playing my stuff. Um, it's really, it sounds crazy, but it's actually really fun to learn, at least for me. So I, I take it you don't get blitzed at shows. No, 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 no. <laughs> Maybe afterwards, but I definitely Ooh, made it. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I'm walking on with a bulldog brain ready to go. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's and that's the thing when you're in that kind of situation, it's you have to be very, I mean, professional and prepared. There's a lot, I, you know, if you're not someone that's doing that as a performer, I think people can watch and see someone a multi instrumentalist and be like, wow, that's impressive, but all the things going on. I remember just going from playing guitar when I started kind of fronting a band and you're sort of focused on entertaining, you're trying to sing, you're trying to play guitar, you're pedal dancing. Yeah. It's like, that's a lot of shit going on. And it really made my respect like for lots of people just even higher than it already was, you know? Yeah. Um, I also, I'm pretty hard on myself, but I think it's because I'm the only female in the band. So I'm trying to like, prove myself while I'm on stage. So like one little mess up is like, Pearl, you freaking suck. Like the rest of the night, I'll just like beat myself up, which I'm trying not to do. Cause That's I know. All I'm not it's all in your I know. I know. <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely something I deal with, with all the bands. I'm, that's why with Pearl Z, I want to, I'm looking for an all female group right now to do live shows. But are, I'm not in a band. Do you, have a, do you have an idea of like what that roster would be instrument wise? Oh, for my, for Pearl Z, um, I would definitely would have um, Ableton triggered like for sub and bass electronic music. And then I'd want a lead guitarist, bassist, and drummer. That also, and then I want the drummer to also trigger um, electronic drums as well. And I'll be running around doing whatever. <laughs> How many people are in Vic? I like remember when we were talking about your last name, and I was like, "Don't worry, I can't remember any of it." Like, oh yeah, um, <laughs> you're gonna say all these bands, and I'm gonna be like, that, "That band you just talked about." So, Vic, help me out and, and say the names of the bands when I have a question, please. You mean Psy Curtis? <laughs> no, the one you were talking about just before. Hello, and the Electric Joint. <laughs> How, many, How many people are in that band? Uh, just say the electric joint. <laughs> the electric joint, cool. <laughs> that band. How many? Um, people band? There's five. Wow. Okay. I was almost thinking it sounded bigger than that. And what about Sly Curtis? And that's a pretty big band, right? Thirteen people. <laughs> wow. Okay, so that's with like the whole fucking horn section and the whole nine, huh? Yeah, but here's. I mean, we can't even rehearse right now because of COVID. So. I'm so sad about that. I do miss my bandmates so much, but um, yeah, we haven't played a show since February. That so sucks too, because did, did y'all have a residency at like one to one or something? Yes, and it, it got bought out, yeah. but I know who bought it. And I believe that they are going to keep the name and that the original owners are going to be working with them for a short time after that. So hopefully it will still be an Austin venue considering there's a depletion of Austin venues <laughs> right now. Yeah, so. it's such a great place. I don't know if you, well, you're in Austin, right? I mean, I guess you remember the original one to one, right? Down yeah. downtown. And um, I think that was Greg, right? It's always just been the same. It's owner. always Greg, yeah. And yeah, uh, so I think Greg is going to get to stay on the team after for a bit. I hope so. Yeah, yeah. I love that new place. I, I was really happy to get to play there. It's really, really, really yeah. a cool place. Are, are they keeping that location? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's good to hear. Okay, cool. 
Um, yeah, they're, they were so amazing. They're one of the few venues that let me play underage and like do my thing. <laughs> what, how long have you been performing? I've been perform. I'm 24 now. Um, I've been performing since I was 18. Awesome. Like in bands. I've been performing on stages since I was like in fifth grade doing other stuff, but. But basically right around, so right about out of high school. I started know. getting paid out of high school. Yeah, awesome. And that's what you do, right? And you've been a musician. Yeah. I don't know how I have survived <laughs> the past few months. I'm definitely struggling, but I'm on the up and up. And I've been, I've actually been doing a lot of visual art and being able to sell it. I don't know how. Yes, but, I was going to uh, ask you about that yes. too. Because I saw some of your paintings. And I remember um, I was on Instagram or something maybe. And I was like, oh, wow, you know. How much a lot of people different. don't know that I do that. <laughs> um, no, your paintings. How many paintings do you have, Ish? Do you know? I have so many. <laughs> um, <laughs> actually, Music Lab at the front right now, I'm having an art exhibit. They let me put up all of my huge paintings that I had no place to put. <laughs> um, I did a series recently called, um, it's just recycling art series. And I took a bunch of cardboard boxes and used them as, as canvas and, and painted a lot of things that are relevant with the circumstances today, like according to the environment and political status, et cetera. Um, and those have been selling magically. I don't know, I kind of went through a depression after uh, South by Southwest got canceled. Um, Cause I was going to go out of town and play shows. I had a whole plan, whatever, yada, yada. But <laughs> once that like hit me, I really just started painting and my room filled up with all these paintings and everyone was like, you got to get rid of this stuff. <laughs> like take it out, do something with it. Um, so I decided to have the balls to just start selling it and telling people that I do art and people have been helping no, me out. Yeah, that's great. I think that's awesome. I've seen that from a few different people. I, Myself got inspired by Bob Ross uh, at the beginning of the pandemic oh, yeah. and painted one painting, and that was that. But I mean, yeah, I, <laughs> Bob Ross ruled. <laughs> I love Bob Ross. I'm wearing my Bob Ross pajama pants right now, actually. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Happy little trees. Awesome. <laughs> yep. Yeah. No, I mean so. Where so where where's the best place to find? Uh, do you have a, a website? I mean, you're on Facebook, you're on Instagram, Pearl Z. Is there a place, a specific place people can go to look at your art? Is there an online place you can go? Um, yes, actually, um, I have a Redbubble account, and it's Pearl Z Art. Redbubble is an app. It's kind of it's like Etsy sort of. I mean, you can get bags, T-shirts, laptop covers, phone covers with my beautiful art on it. Everyone. <laughs> Um, you can find the link to that through my Instagram, which is uh, at Pearl underscore Z music. Um, but if you already have a Redbubble account, you just type in Pearl Z art and I should pop up. Um, another, I'm also, I have my Pearl Z music.com website, which I haven't, I'm still thinking about like if I should put my art on my music website or not. So I don't know if it's going to be separate yet, but for now it's, you can find it all through my Instagram in one place. Cool. Is there an average sort of selling price or is it all over the place? It's all over the place. I kind of wanted it to be like that though, because a lot of people are struggling with money right now. So, I mean, if you like want to support me, but like from some of my friends who can't afford to buy my, $300 painting that's on the wall or whatever you can get a print of it on like a cup for like five dollars so oh uh, yeah cool I think people are more like inclined to do that instead of buy actual physical pieces because art is expensive in the long run yeah um <laughs> yeah we I mean Nick's got some stuff back there we had yeah. uh, we had an art dealer on here recently yeah yeah I had Donald on here Oh, cool. Yeah. I feel like I need to be more, more in touch with the art community in Austin. It's like that guitar thing. I'm like, I'm not an artist until I decide I'm making money. <laughs> I also think when you, like when we were talking about teaching earlier, it's, 
it's like you kind of think like I, it's I, I I like now that I've been doing it forever and I'm like, oh, dude, you should teach. Like I got students now that I'm like, man, when you're like out of, when you go to college, you should just like teach music lessons. Like it's yeah. an easy way for you to like make money and still be doing what you love, you know? Like, but I always think I played for years and and all this stuff and and worked other jobs and then I was just like. All of a sudden, a, a kind of an opportunity came up to teach at a school, and I kind of taught some private lessons. But it's like anything else, right? You're like you're not just like magically great the first time you perform. Like you know what the fuck you're doing the first time you like give someone a guitar. Oh my gosh, my first concert it was a disaster. <laughs> so bad, so bad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and you're like trying to tell them, and then the miter and the, uh, and they're just like, ah, show me a G chord. What the uh, fuck? Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> learn and now it's like i'm so comfortable like you could, i'm just like oh whatever I, you know it's like i've been doing it for so long you know but i think you you kind of have that fear right uh, maybe it could be a fear of, i'm not good enough i'm not, i don't sing good enough i don't play good enough oh i'm not good enough to teach and then you do it and you're like oh like i can totally do this like and maybe like once in a blue moon once every decade like someone comes along you're like you should not be here you're like you read yeah. I suck but like that's so rare like most people you know what I mean like I'm yeah so you only find that at the big music schools I think <laughs> happened to me like twice ever and like yeah I came in and he was just like oh here's my Beethoven cheat music and I'm like sweating <laughs> like, oh my god <laughs> it's like the pieces that you kind of like you know write a passage that you kind of know and I but I'm going like because what I can right. do like analyzing go through the theory of it which is like what I found a lot of readers and that especially the classically trained made but they don't really understand the theory and the chords and all that kind of stuff and so there's that but man if you put me on the spot to sight read i'm i'm like whatever that terror you used to feel like that's ask me to sight read. i'm just like uh that was yeah that was me with piano i had the best first uh, piano was my first instrument but like i was a child child before i even cared about really and truly playing music but my piano teacher totally understood how my brain worked. She put sheet music in front of me and tried to teach me for like probably three or four weeks. And I just was not having it. But he would play something and he could tell I was copying him with my ears. Like I would just look at him and copy it and play it just fine. And he was like, all right, Pearl, we're just going to teach you by ear. So he taught me to play by ear first, which yeah. I think really helped. Yeah, you got to roll with what they're comfortable with. And I think things will come around. It all fits together eventually. Yeah, totally. But, that's why I think that's my approach with teaching children, for sure. I'm like, what do you want to learn? Let me go learn some Frozen, some crap Elsa sings. Okay, and then we're going to name the chords you're singing. <laughs> yeah, I think because for that, I think a big part of like with kids too, right? But young people is you just got to like, you want them to walk away excited about music and feeling oh, like yeah. positive something not how many people like we, you meet through your whole life right anyone who's not a musician it's the same story it's like oh, i used to take piano lessons and i quit and i really regret it and i really you know and it's just like totally you don't want that you know it's like at the very least it's like kind of give you some tools where you can do this and whenever you are ready you can dive in if you want to but you're not going to walk away going like god i hate piano <laughs> yeah God, when I hear people say that, it breaks my rock and roll heart. <laughs> no, it it's, it's actually great. Like I get super like nerdy and excited when I'm actually in that kind of lesson, when you're really talking about music, you know, because it's, yeah. it's a lame. And I, I mean, you can tell the difference in the personality of the person. They oh. walk with a pep in their step. <laughs> if they've had a good lesson, you can tell. <laughs> it's awesome. It's really cool. Um, so you started taking piano when you were a kid and then you kind of picked that up around the guitar. So let's see, singing, guitar, piano. What else do you play? Um, I produce on Ableton now. I produce, I've been making beats for rappers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but very straightforward, simple beats. I give it to them and they do their thing, which is really weird for me because obviously I'm a total rocker bitch. But sorry, I don't know if I'm cursing too much. Um, oh no! Too much Let French. Let I, don't know. I had to go through our podcast the other day and put explicit on everyone. Like, okay, cool. <laughs> I might be explicit, um, but yeah, I have been. Where? How long have I been doing Ableton? I've been working on Ableton for a few years, over three. Um, 
I really, I didn't go to school for production, but I had, I was fortunate to have a lot of really talented producers around me to learn from for years. And, um, I've definitely asked questions along the way. Like I wasn't scared to ask stupid questions, um, which I feel like I'm not speaking for every female, but I feel like that's a common thing for women in the studio, which is why there's more male producers. So I really started forcing myself to make crappy beat after crappy beat for like five hours a day, straight on for like two years. Um, one of my best friends unfortunately passed away like three years. And I think to mourn her death, I was like all in on my Ableton. <laughs> and I think that's like part of the drive and what got me this far, um, which is why I'm confident enough to make other people beats. But I really learned to, um, so that I could create my own demos and present them to bigger producer producers and sponsors. Like give them like a 10 track of whatever the hell I can write myself that I don't have to, you know, spend a fortune on just to make a demo. So that's basically why I learned Ableton and I wanted to combine, you know, the whole electronic side of newer music with rock and roll too. So I felt like I had to really dive into the electronic world in order to do that properly. I mean, that's such a, that's such a thing nowadays, like being sort of knowing those, those ascent, now they become a basic essential skills for, especially for the DIY artist, unless you're a mega pop star, totally. sort of like, okay, you dance and sing and that's your full-time job. And everyone else will, you know, you kind of got to know all these things. And I, I found myself, especially in this pandemic, actually teaching more in that realm too, because a lot of things are online. It's like, well, let's do like recordings. Let's, let's talk about working yeah. on recording. And I actually, I actually weirdly more comfortable teaching someone how to do Ableton up to intermediate level than I am with a real instrument for some reason. I don't know why, but I can just like flow easily on the computer, like, and speak, you know, maybe it's cause it's more of a technical thing and playing on a real instrument is more of an emotional songwriting. Like there's no, I think probably because there's no like bar the only barriers are like you don't know this yet. It's not right. like you can't physically do this. Like you can or, like make notes on the buttons. <laughs> like exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean that's kind of interesting. I feel like, you know, for me it's been a, a, a learning experience that it never ends, you know, you just keep learning and Yeah. You, and definitely one of my main things I would tell anyone working on Ableton or, you know, GarageBand, Logic, whatever the heck you work on, Pro Tools, is to, like, always break the rules, honestly. Even if you start to get into your, like, musical flow of writing, just continue to make a sound that breaks the rules or, like, people haven't done that because that's going to be the new thing. I mean, not the new, like, quote-unquote, dang, but, like, that's what's going to make you sound more individual and unique. It actually makes me like it's inspiring too to go completely out of your comfort zone. I I, remember, I was using an example of one time I was like uh, writing. I was sitting at the piano and I was like writing. It was sad, you know, whatever. Broke up with girlfriend or some minor chords and boo emo <laughs> boo who me bullshit. And I was just like, <laughs> fuck's sake, man. And so I was like, all right, I've got to like I I've got to. Like, everything I can to like go the opposite way right now and challenge myself. Right. And I, and I drew from like old TV, like Alf and shit, you know, like old TV and came up with a goofy, like T and that was so much fun and just come try, trying, trying yeah. different chords and dorky sounds and the drum machine. And so I agree totally. I think it, it keeps you like inspired and it makes you push yourself yeah. just in that way too. You know, and I noticed like, I mean, all the packs that people buy to download their samples, those guys are breaking the rules. <laughs> that's why you're buying the packs, you know? <laughs> yeah, totally. I mean, that's, I love it when you, it's, you're, you know, it's funny you say that because it's so easy to like, I have no idea how, really what I'm doing, but I'll sort of like, you know, again, pre-produce and make. It's probably know. better that way. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, you know, like, cause you, you're right. Like, it's nice to have a balance of freedom. And I always say that about teaching and music theory. It's like, these are parameters and theories and rules that exist and everything for a reason. You want to know them, but dude like throw all that shit out the window and like break glass and bang on all the keys and like that's cool too you know what i mean like it's rules are made to be broken so i think it's learning that's what makes a fun lesson 
stuff and learn the rules and then don't be afraid to break the rules the way you said it like don't be afraid to do that and think outside of the box and try new stuff because that's one cool thing about getting new toys and plugins or instruments whatever the case may be like it gets you away from what you've become comfortable with and all of a sudden you're going like wow that's a weird ass that's something different wow let me try this now right. yeah i mean just you think about i mean the amount of electronic music genres there are now just because of these weird ass little teeny tiny sound differences in the electronic music you know that's like a big part of people going against the grain and i think that's that's the whole point of that electronic music right now which is cool to learn from I love that about you that you're eclectic like that too. You're talking about electronica and, and making beats. You're also just straight up, you know, you can get on the guitar and just rock and roll. You've got classical vocal training, you know, so you kind of got, I think you have like your, you know, you're a rocker chick, right. Mentality, but you're like, you, you can play in all these different yeah. arenas and you draw from stuff and you get inspired and, and make different music to me. Like, I love that. My face, my favorite artists are like way wacko out, you know, outside, of not Hell yeah. <laughs> what are some of your biggest inspirations like what are, for you um my biggest inspirations well that's a really long list i'll try and make it short um <laughs> i am obviously absolutely in love with aretha franklin and etta james amy winehouse james brown led zeppelin is one of my favorite bands ever of course uh as far as modern music goes i am really intrigued by the new pop scene like I mean like Ariana Grande stuff and the way that uh, I guess it's because I've been focusing on producing lately but the differences in vocal tones that are presented on the radio right now are really intriguing to me even with like uh, Lizzo even with like you know the ratchet girls like Megan the Stallion and stuff like that um, it's cool to listen to the new music and try to imitate that um, I'm really inspired by Bjork. I love Bjork it. has totally transformed my brain holes. <laughs> um, when she came out and I was like in high school and I was just like, the fuck is I freaking love her. <laughs> Later, like when I kind of started playing here and started my band, it's like my, my drummer what got me back, what got me into Bjork was our drummer was like, hey, let's do a cover of like something different. Let's do a Bjork cover. So we ended up doing a Bjork cover. We covered that song, Isabel, and yeah. uh, I rocked it out, you know? And I was just like, okay. And I went and checked it out. And I was like, holy shit, this album's badass. And I, like, ever since I've just yeah. like, oh, like, yeah, Bjork is badass. She's, and she's another one of those people who's constantly thinking outside of the box. I mean, even watching her in an interview, she's, Talking about how she's miking up like things in boxes, shit that doesn't really make sense, but it's still she can still do it because she's breaking the rules. Um, also, really like Radiohead too for that reason. And uh, I've noticed that like some of the nearest last few albums that Nine Inch Nails has done, I see Trent Reznor breaking into that electronic world in a really artistic way, also while still keeping their rock and roll fucking awesome nine inch nails vibe <laughs> yeah, yeah right. it's like, and all these kind of guys like trent reznor and nine inch nails was such a you want to say unique but it wasn't i mean it kind of you know what i mean it, but and i look back and now it's like you start listening to stuff like you know craft work craft works kind of fast. yeah they were doing that shit in the 70s and you yeah. know kind of the guys that came in like depeche mode and the it kind of seemed like it hit in the late 80s early 90s when so many great things were happening but that kind of what how would you describe 9 inch nails in its original form when they were peaking peaking they're always peaking but mm -hmm. um <laughs> in its original form i mean i think electronic but it's kind of rock you know yeah. i mean i think it's grungy but he did all that shit on keyboards right and bass. Bass. It was like he a wrote a lot of stuff on bass, the vocals and stuff. It was kind of like this grunge industrial sound because yeah. it was a pretty hate machine, I think. And it was yeah. in 90, 89. Yeah, I'd say that's more grunge, right? I don't know. Yeah, kind of leading up to that grunge. I actually I got to go see Nine Inch Nails several years ago. Um 
at the AT&T Center, I got a concussion. I was in the mosh pit. <laughs> oh, damn. <clears throat> yeah. My Nine Inch Nails stories are crazy. Um, <laughs> What's up? Soundgarden? Huh? Is that the tour with Soundgarden? No, but I saw that one also because I freaking love Soundgarden also. Soundgarden is one of my favorite bands of all time. So glad to see that show and see Soundgarden. And they and Soundgarden opened. And I was like... Soundgarden was better that night. Soundgarden was better that night. <laughs> I don't know, man. Honestly, like, and then Nine Inch Nails came out. And I was like, fuck, this is really... Yeah, then you're like, yeah. <laughs> they had addiction and they were good. But I thought that show that they played here... At the at the three six at the racetrack with with Soundgarden, I really loved the stage setup and the, that they. I just thought it was so. Yeah. Bad. He came out and started the show just him. That's with the shadows, right? Oh, fucking cool! And then like the band started showing up and they had the turning boxes and the, yeah, it was yeah. Really, really cool. That was awesome. I think the only reason why I was favoring Soundgarden that show is because I had seen Nine Inch Nails do their own tour mm. the year before, and it was so freaking epic, and uh i had floor tickets i got a concussion because this guy was headbanging of course hard as crap and hit my face and i got like a bloody nose but i didn't want to leave because i was like right there <laughs> and i love nine inch nails so i was like dude i'm just gonna stick it out and it was great um they had a cage like circulating the stage and they were rotating they played everything perfectly of course there were several people in the crowd that held up knives which was absolutely crazy it was a very hardcore show at the at t center wow <laughs> yeah it was like really like cool awesome rockers and then terrifying terrifying god little heads <laughs> with their knives out it's like it's, i've only i've seen that too so i was at an Ozfest one time and in uh, i think like typo negative it just was the first time i saw that was awesome and sepultura and then we got up pretty close and ozzy was going to come on and we were super stoked and then this gigantic motherfucker just this walrus of a beast just uh, comes wading through the crowd with a fucking knife and me and my buddy are just yeah. like what? Jesus. i'm out you know what i mean like and there was this one time i saw clutch here at the old emos and i'm standing there with my friend and we're just watching it and she just goes look and there's like an open blade like on the floor and i'm like oh shit and i was like so, so bad <laughs> so drunk and stone that night and i was just like oh my god and so i like picked up this knife and i'm like what do i do and i'm just like it's kind of like dumb and i'm like walking through the crowd and everyone's like holy shit <laughs> i like walk up to my buddy like and i'm like dude i'm like way fucked up if i like walk up to a cop right now they're just gonna like throw me down on the ground and i'm like here <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, take this knife People do that shit. <laughs> that clutch was awesome, though, right? What are some other great concerts you've seen? Vic and I will just talk about clutch all night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're better, better. <laughs> um, let's see. Here. One of my favorite concerts was... Um, I really freaking love Childish Gambino at the last ACL. That was... He did a phenomenal job. Um, I thought the whole production was great. Obviously he did great, but also he has his own film crew on tour with him. So, and he also creates his own, um, movies. So he has his own style of film. It kind of looks older than like what we see now. Um, but it was beautiful and, uh, he was really on brand with his whole show and filming. And that was awesome. One of my other most favorite shows was seeing Robert Plant at the, uh, the ACL Moody Theater, ACL Live. Um, he was with Sensational Space Shifters, um, but it was one of the tours where he brought a lot of people back from Africa and he played a lot of Zeppelin songs on crazy instruments I don't know the name of. Um, that was really awesome to see. And let's see, what else? Um, Obviously, oh, Jack White. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of Jack White. <laughs> I've seen him like four times. I have an ACL. Have you been to a many ACLs or? Oh, yeah. I've been to almost every ACL since I was like 12. Oh, wow. So you were at that one where he played. It was him and Neil Young at the same time. And I know oh, yeah, yeah. Of Neil Young. And I know Neil Young's earned his stripes. But goddamn, we were like watching Neil Young. I was like, this is boring as fuck. <laughs> and we oh, went yeah. 
Jack White was badass. One of the best shows I've seen. Well, I've only been to a few ACLs. The Chili Peppers blew my mind. They were great. Oh wait, two, yeah, that's also one of my favorite shows because I'm obsessed with Chili Peppers. Chili Peppers were so, <laughs> so, so good live. And then um, who else was at that year? I think that you know that band Metric. Have you seen them? They I play- love Metric. Yeah. Good. I think that band's incredibly underrated, actually. I agree. I was blown away. I thought they were so good. Um, i trying to think who else was at that ACL now. It's so hard to think about my favorite shows because I've, I've seen so many. <laughs> I've seen so many and so many good ones. I know, right? Like, what was your first concert? Um, James Brown. I'm not wow. lying. James Brown outside of Stubbs. I was nine years old. Boom. <laughs> Just do a mic drop and we'll end the fucking podcast. Mic drop. Yeah. <laughs> you know what though? I got to be honest. Like, I think we all have pretty epic first. Con- I mean, the Godfather of Soul. I mean, James fucking Brown for crying out loud. But I got to say, like, I'm very lucky. My first concert was fucking incredible. It was Metallica, Guns N' Roses, and Faith No More. To this day, like, oh, still- that's so cool. Yeah. You know, bands. Guess what Vix was? What? what? Was cool? I don't know i mean you did it was kiss right yeah it was kiss yeah oh. <laughs> yeah i always talk shit about kiss but it, I mean, well, well i mean yeah, you know, you yeah. Know. feel free to and it was lame kiss too it wasn't like makeup kiss with the original lineup it was like uh that's not lame <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, put your makeup on put your makeup on yeah. uh, no, uh, I literally my dad put me on his shoulders to at James Brown and the motherfucker held my hand, y'all. <laughs> oh, I'm so awesome. serious. This really happened. And then he died a month later on Christmas. That was like one of the first times I've ever seen my father cry, too, is when James Brown died. So crazy because wow. um God, what year what year was that? Um do the math but I can't. anyway it was someone do the math i'm 24 i was nine <laughs> whatever 15 years ago so yeah, whatever that was uh but 2006 there you go thanks Vic. there we go <laughs> good so, it didn't seem that long ago i'm like didn't he just die and then i had to look it up i'm like oh it feels like he did shit <laughs> yeah a month later, that's what's wild. Like, was he was he fucking nailing it? Was he in top? He was nailing it and totally doing the splits. He did the whole cape thing. Um, we watched. Uh, of course, he yelled at somebody because they soloed too long, but that's like common for him apparently. Um, that was Skunk like the- does that too. Who? Skunk does that too. He yells at people <laughs> when they solo too long. <laughs> hey, shut up! <laughs> Quiet. <laughs> That's what James Brown was doing. He's like waving his hands behind his back like that. I well, I've heard that apparently that he would do that. He would have these moves that he did that would he would basically bust his band if they fucked up. And he but, would, yeah, they get fired. Yeah. They were like, someone's getting fired tonight. <laughs> so good, like like James Brown and Prince and shit. It's like yeah, I heard one note slightly bent out of tune. You're fired. You know. He's, yep. That's a lot of talk about fucking pressure being in one of those bands, you know? Oh yeah. That's terrifying. <laughs> I would have so much anxiety. Um, I'm trying to think of any other. Oh, I saw Aretha Franklin also um, with my mom. My mom took me, it was when she came to the Moody theater for the ACL thing. Um That was really, really good and super iconic, but it wasn't like one of those performances that's like James Brown, you know? Did you happen to... It was very calm. We were all super, super like hot and sweating in our seats because she wants the temperature to be warm in the stadium. Um, She wouldn't even come out on stage until it was a certain temperature because of her vocal cords. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, and then she, yeah, second song through, she was like, I'm not kidding. I will walk off stage if you don't fix the temperature. <laughs> and I was like, whoa. She's she took her shoes off, but she sang beautifully. Um, but it was kind of kind of a little bit shitty to see her be so sassy on stage. It was a bit but, of a- uh, she deserves it, whatever the fuck she does. I, I, I would have wanted her to play that song from the Blues Brothers movie. <laughs> Are you 
No, 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 not that. What was the one that they did in that movie? You, you gotta think. Yeah, yeah, better think. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I don't know the name of it, but. <laughs> yep. Great, <Yeah>. wow. <laughs> I actually auditioned with an Aretha Franklin song for the freaking The Voice. So cliche, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, but if you can do it, do it. Shit, you know, because like, <laughs> yeah, I I did the same thing. It didn't work out too well. <laughs> I never even got to sing though. I was just demanding that the temperature was right, and they were like, "Get the fuck." This is so crazy. We were dying in the seats. Like everyone up in the balcony was just like, <sighs> my mom was like, "I'm gonna have a heat flash." <laughs> Yeah, that sucks especially like it's like we're in fucking texas lady like yeah i know you think we can take it but this shit still sucks it's but never- we can't take it <laughs> that fucking ac on that's why we have <laughs> the moody for a reason it's got air i know <laughs> vocal cords <laughs> yeah i mean it's unfortunate but you kind of i mean you can kind of understand also it seems extreme but i always heard it, it's weird how you kind of get a a negative connotation of somebody like I, I heard multiple things about Chuck Berry being a total dick, you know, and he's oh, a really? yeah. rock and roll icon. I mean, you know, Chuck Berry, but then you're kind of like, but I mean, at the same time, if you're Chuck Berry, like I kind of, you would kind of be like, yeah, pay me. <laughs> oh yeah. And then, I mean, I've seen both sides of, I mean, I don't know. I've seen fame when it's absolutely terrible and unenjoyable and i've seen it be awesome also so i bet those musicians are incredibly jaded with the way they act towards people because <laughs> they've seen all that shit <laughs> i also think sometimes people have a bad day like you know like sometimes oh, yeah. a personal just have an off day and then never, someone's like oh he's a huge dick because i mean i know people that i've heard things about it and, then a, and then a friend met you know the same person who was like oh they were super cool so you know yeah Yep, but I give them the benefit of the doubt sometimes. At least I try to. <laughs> Unless you're Skunk and his brother trying to take a picture of Dave Mustaine. Oh my god! <laughs> Yelled at by Dave Mustaine is as awesome as you think it would be. Yeah. <laughs> Next time, read the instructions. <laughs> Funner than pissing off a rock star. <laughs> You guys can't hear this bass, can you? I hope you can't. I heard like a little little bit. For a second there, I was like, am I thumping something? And I was like, oh, yeah, music lab. But I don't really hear anything. We're in the real freaking scene. So here you go. (laughs) (laughs) So I do my thing. (laughs) So concerts. um, Oh, now, can I ask any any acts or bands you don't like? Hmm, That I don't like. I don't Terrible. hate anyone really. <laughs> I'm gonna prep guests from now on when I say that. And so like if you're uncomfortable and you don't know and you don't have any you don't want to badmouth anyone, then just say good Roger and those guys suck. Just I mean <laughs> I truly, really and truly cannot think of somebody I dislike, at least of any bands that we would know, like personally in town or anything like that. I don't um I guess I don't really like I'm not a big fan of fish and a lot of people hate that. <laughs> I can see that. I mean, it, is it the jam band thing where it's just kind No, of- it's the fact that I went to see fish and I hated it. <laughs> oh, now why? Was it boring or was it just It was a- boring to me and I didn't want it to be. Same and I went with my brother and he also felt the same way and he is a fish fan. Hey, it is what it oh, is. That's the only like big band I've been like, what the fuck? <laughs> I don't like this. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm not like one of those guys that like talks mad shit about you know a bunch of bands and stuff because I understand like it's how hard it is and I'm I mean not yeah. I'm anywhere near that stratosphere. Especially when people, I mean, I it's always good to have a, a band war like talking about like why a certain band sucks with your friends and stuff like that. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> like, dude, why do you like this band? They're obviously terrible. <laughs> Some people are very opinionated. I've done that a few times, but I can't think of them off the top of my head. <laughs> we'll help you out. <laughs> <laughs> Pete, after me, this band sucks. Yeah, <laughs> but it's, 
you're right though and maybe it's a bad night i think it's like not every band either has to be uh, uh this big crazy extravagant running around you know chili peppers crazy awesome energetic just amazing right but like when i saw like neil young they did this thing and i mean people love neil young and they thought it was the greatest thing everybody they're like stomping around for 10 minutes like making reverb noise and i was just like you know what i mean yeah i'll yep. say like the black keys also played that year and i think the black keys have tons of great songs like they have great catchy tunes but i was kind of just bored you know uh this is at acl yeah i've seen the black keys also like way too many times and i they have really bad shows and then really good shows really? okay i mean i've seen them where D dan Auerbach looks totally strung out on stage not present whatsoever which is really sad actually because i i saw them open for dr dog a long time ago at stubs and like they were like super energetic fucking cool two-piece band playing blues stuff and right? I'm you sure know, hungry like even that. his face looked different and alive and when i saw him at that acl show you're talking about he looked so unhealthy which was hmm. a disappointment i've seen that happen also with the arctic monkeys too i've seen them do really really well and then i have one of the first weekends of acl alex turner the singer of arctic monkeys walked out on stage and like the lights shined on him and he like blocked his face like he was tripping out or some crap and it was a disaster and <laughs> Shows like that make me very sad for those talented musicians. Yeah, and I wonder, like, I'm like why are you doing that? <laughs> who knows, though, right? It could be, it could be yeah. drugs and alcohol, or it could just be complete fucking exhaustion. Vic, I don't know if you remember, and I don't know if it was one one of the shows we had tickets to because we, I think, have seen Rodrigo y Gabriela a couple times over the years, and they had to cancel a tour from like because from exhaustion or some shit. Remember? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, when I saw Cardi B. Who I love, fuck the haters. I love Cardi B. <laughs> and uh, she, when I saw her at ACL, she came on stage 30 minutes late. People are starting to leave. Like, they were like, oh, she shows up late, like all the time, whatever. Um, she came on stage and did a phenomenal job. She looked healthy as crap. But when the lights went down, her whole body just like slumped. It was her last day of the tour. She looked like a totally different person when lights went down like she could breathe and like she was so exhausted and that's when i was like oh man like these pop stars are so tired they are so tired I'm like she could hardly even walk at the normal speed and then lights come up and she's like back in action like doing whatever the hell her brand is having her do but that was just a crazy thing to like see the perspective of real cardi b and then publicize cardi b <laughs> We're going to get back to you and scrutinize the Cardi B thing here in a minute. But <laughs> <laughs> speaking of that whole pop star thing, did you, there was a, a somewhat recently uh, documentary, I think, or some kind of film with about Lady Gaga. Did you see that? Yes. It's called five foot two. Yeah. I've seen that. Really interesting. I, I mean, I like Lady Gaga. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing you probably do. I don't know. I love Lady Gaga. And uh, I thought it was really, but, but you know what I mean? Like uh, the back problems and the exact, just, it's like super, super demanding. She's, you know? she's so tired. <laughs> she's yeah. so tired. All working all the time and just so badass. Um, yeah. And those girls are having to do those damn shows and heels like that. Yes. And that's the thing. It's like, well, I mean, Michael Jackson fucking killed him, you know? I mean, oh, yeah. Constantly, constantly. And that guy was a maniac, you know? I mean, work, work, workhorse, workhorse, Prince, all these people, workhorses, you know, all the time, work, 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 work. And not only are you playing, like we were talking about earlier, not only are you playing or singing, you're dancing. You've got this entire, you know, all this choreography that you're working on every day. It's, ex it's That's why, I like, I'm, I have mixed feelings about uh, people like, I mean, geez, I'll take Britney Spears, for example, who gets shit on a lot for lip singing. The woman's a dancer. <laughs> She's mostly a dancer. If you see like her, her on stage and like her career path and what she's been most passionate about, it's totally dancing, not singing. So same with like everyone else who are like the, that are under those huge labels that are having to do choreography, like Bruno Mars, also the uh, Lady Gaga, Beyonce, whatever. They're all dancing. So, I mean, I don't know what normal person can do that without lip singing, at least for a portion of it and having backing tracks, you know? 
Yeah, and I think with that style of show and those massive pop shows, where that's it's all about the choreography and the entertainment and the spectacle, and the, it, it's not like a it, rock and roll is a little different. You kind of want authenticity from rock and roll. Like if Metallica faked it, it'd be like, what the fuck, you know what I mean? But like, it's di- it's a different kind of act. What's cool though is when you ha- when you have Lady Gaga and Beyonce, like they're like you know they're the real fucking deal. Like if the, even if they're out there lip syncing it because they're focusing on the, all this other stuff, it's like. You know, they'll can... also do something like sitting down at a piano singing yeah, their ball. Exactly. <laughs> they can totally deliver. You know, they can do it. Britney yeah. Spears is different. I, I don't. She's my... she's not in that category. <laughs> but you know, to be fair, you know, I'm sure you know it's a lot of hard work. Had to do, you know, did all that stuff. Great entertainer and worked with some great producers at the very least to you know have yeah. some, some very very good catchy hooky pop tunes. So you know, I mean. I get it. You know what I mean? It's um, it's really admirable when someone really does have that full package, though, because that, that's kind of a rare. That's literally one of the things I've been considering with Pearl Z, which is why I've been paying attention to the whole singing thing. And I've been as far as my Pearl Z production for 2021. It's all about right now because of the COVID setback. It's about me paying my dancers properly. But I've also just been questioning, like, am I going to be doing that? Like, should I actually conform to that? Or do I stick with the rock and roll thing and have other women or whoever the hell I want dancing behind me, you know? Because I do want to incorporate that. I grew up with dancers. So. Did you take dance lessons and that kind of stuff, too? Yeah, my dad was a professional dancer, actually. He he has a Tony Award for getting for being one of the first African-American and deaf dancers to tour the world. Um, he's also deaf, but, um, obviously he can like feel vibrations in the ground when he's dancing and stuff, which is how he can dance on beat, et cetera. Wow. What year did he win the Tony? Uh, huh? Uh, when did he, what year was it that he won the Tony? Do you know? I don't know. He's in his sixties right now and he was in his like thirties when this happened. What was it for? Uh, it was. You don't know. Huh? But sorry if I'm asking you questions that you don't know. I don't know. Quit I asking. don't. I don't know the year. I have the picture on my Instagram. You can go look at that. <laughs> um, him and two other men all got awarded the Tony at the same time for being in this touring group of. Uh, he did like African dance and like a combination of that and modern, and also ballet. And he was a teacher here in Austin for at the School of the Deaf for a long time. Um, after touring so cool like i you know i tell this story every now and then uh have you ever played for well i mean your father's deaf so but i mean he like, still goes to my shows he puts his hand up on the monitor yeah like <laughs> I experience once where we were we were playing at, at doc's back this doc's backyard and uh um there was a lot of people there and and it was just it was like kind of a it was a country band you know americana stuff we we're playing and then we had like a break and and no one was like really clapping and i was just like man this crowd sucks <laughs> yeah. been, you know like god nobody gives a shit out but there was all these people there and then like w- as i was like walking and when i was outside i was like walking up to the bar i was like i saw a bunch of people signing I was, like oh, oh oh yeah then i walked in the bar and it was packed and everyone was signing and i was like holy shit and i was <laughs> You're like they actually didn't hear <laughs> So weird because i was like i was like so confused i was like well i don't understand like did you know we were playing like and it was like they were oh no it's like deaf night once a month or something and they were like no they love it like they love they the- love it um i have happening you know it was really interesting yeah i've gotten taught how to <laughs> i've gotten taught how to what's it called shuffle step at a freaking rave from a group of deaf people <laughs> This guy literally, (laughs) he came up to me. I think he was like, he signed to me. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I signed back. Yes. And they were like, whoa, like this bitch knows sign language and there's like a rave going on, whatever. (laughs) And I saw them dancing like really like whatever the hell those ravers are doing that I don't, I just make the music. Okay. (laughs) But they taught me how to do it. And I was like, oh my God, like they can totally feel the different frequencies so specifically with electronic music which is crazy which got me into even caring about how frequencies work yeah no. synths and stuff so cool uh man i know i've i've it's it's pretty wild i've I, once i've read something about a, a guy that put he would put his mouth his teeth on a record player and could 
that's how he learned to hear music. Yeah. It's yeah. right. Yeah, even growing up as a kid, I used to hate it when my dad would do this, but he put his hand like on my neck and I would sing and he could hear or like feel what I was singing and stuff. As I've gotten older, I'm like, okay, dad, you can do that. But like in my choir days, I'd be like, don't touch me. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm embarrassed. You, be you can't even hear me. <laughs> but then I realized actually technically can. <laughs> That's wild. Um, hey, so, you know, you mentioned the frequency spectrum. How are you on on that whole thing? Do you have a pretty good idea of that or is, are you just hearing it? Um, I could be a billion times better for sure. But um, I have been working with different synthesizers and serum and I'm getting to understand it much better. Um, I am. Someone gave me a vintage analog book from like their music school and that crap helps me a lot with the modern day plugins I have on my computer actually just learning how a real synthesizer works and transposing it onto an electric one I think oh. it's important to go back to the crazy like wire cables going into the weird ass random holes whatever and understanding how that works and then applying it to your whatever like, electronic like real audio engineers back in the day who cut tape and and calibrated machines and nowadays I, mean, like, I didn't go to school for it so i didn't know so i forced myself to no i mean but you're right you <laughs> you should too, right you can't just be like i'm gonna start right here with cardi b like you need yeah. to understand like any musician right you need to like go back and you need to like listen to the fucking blues and like understand what oh, yeah. you know what i mean so i think it's the same in that sense like understanding how these things originally work you know even if it's totally. evolved to something totally different anyway so why do you like Cardi B? Um, I like her because I watched a video of her freestyling a long time ago before she was signed at a hip hop competition. And um, she was holding the microphone and her hand was shaking so bad because she was so nervous. And like she couldn't even keep the mic like at her mouth. But the words that were coming out of her mouth, the amount of like rapping speed she was doing by improvising totally blew me away. And I was like, you're the real deal. Like, what the hell? I thought you were just like a piece of ASS on freaking screen, but you're not. <laughs> um, that's why I even cared to pay attention to her music. And I have mixed feelings with the confidence slash degrading of women when we talk about these like twerking signed women, but also I also I embrace the them embracing their sexual sexuality in a confident way instead of having it be um I don't know. I think it's just different than you know, having 50 Cent have a bunch of girls twerking behind him, you know? Now there's like an actual front woman who says she's got like balls in a dick <laughs> and I think that's pretty that's inspiring to me as a female because I got my own cojones <laughs> yeah no you know I can that makes sense I can I can yeah. see that that um appeal but it, really, it really was me like having I had to watch her actually slay an improvising like rap competition to be like oh you're for real well that's what I was gonna say is I I've noticed that to be the case a lot of times and it's 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 a you know a cliche thing to do with anything always new music right and you're like Ugh, back in my day you know and right. and and it's it's hard to get past some of the the great stuff you know whether it be the classic classics or the stuff you grew up with or whatever I mean you know you're only 24 but but I mean it's it is a big difference from the, those sometimes I feel like I'm a hundred okay. <laughs> that, that, at least you don't look like it. I actually started to look like I'm a hundred, but like the. the <laughs> The stuff that you you know influenced you so much in high school and that kind of stuff, and then the, so it's real easy to kind of cast aside a lot of new music. I don't I don't do that, but for me though, like I'll use hip hop as an example. Like there, once people get real big and real, you know, and so like I, I for years like oh Jay ever Jay Z Jay Z, and I'm just like ugh whatever Jay Z what what's so great about Jay? And then I saw like some old school like freestyling Jay Z, and I was like holy fucking shit, like you know what I mean? So. I think a lot of these people, there's a reason they got somewhere. They got fucking. Totally. And then they freaking made the industry slash conformed. So, yeah. And then the, you know, the nickelback of whatever your genre is. And, yeah. you know, so, and that's what's selling records. Her, her, you know, WAP is selling records. Yeah. Their own. 
<laughs> wop, wop, wop. <laughs> um, I, but as far as like newer rap th- goes, I gotta say, I freaking love J. Cole and Kendrick Lamar right now. Those are my favorite rappers right now. Kendrick Lamar has really gotten a lot of praise for sure. I think he won a Grammy a few years, but he's another one though. The first time I heard it, I was like, what the fuck is this? And then all of a sudden he's like playing with a fucking big band and shit. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, but with those rappers, if you look at their lyrics written down, it's not just like wop, wop, wop. It's like some real ass shit. Like, yo, I came from nothing. (laughs) You could do it too. (laughs) Yeah. And of course, like that's massively inspiring to a lot of people. And also, What's another thing that's impressive to me that is like these the just the art of the freestyle and the guys that can do that, you know. So there's something to be said for that. And I you can very much judge a book by its cover and look at someone and maybe not even like the content that they're rapping about or singing about, but to be able to have the skill set to do it, I can always give props on that. I try to do that with a lot of music where I try to go, I don't really like this, or I don't like I don't like the commercialized version of it, or I don't like the I don't agree with the lyrical content, but I can usually find something where like, but I I understand I can respect this artist or I can respect the production or the song structure or whatever the case may be, you know? And I try and do that now, especially just because I'm clearly eager to learn. And like, I want to learn from everyone I play with and watch on television, YouTube, whatever the hell. And even if they are not good musically in my eyes they're clearly doing something more successful than i am in some ways so it's important to pay attention to what that changes you know yeah it's all relevant it's you have to be aware of the you know i mean and you know you you have to accept that there's a music business out there and do your best to i guess understand it you know and and understand and all that kind of shit so yep his important anyway vic what do you think about all that um yes yes (laughs) well i mean (laughs) pearl this is usually the time in the podcast (laughs) oh god spit it out (laughs) us dudes just start Explosive shit stories and such. So lay it on us. Some shit stories. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any shit stories. Is it true? Do- I get flowers. <laughs> shit. Do you just you just whisper in your panties? Is that what it is? Oh, that's so gross. <laughs> you ever seen that meme? <laughs> that little, like cartoon meme with like some chick. No. I whisper in my panties. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Every time they start dating a new woman, like they just. Ooh. Did you have a whisper? <laughs> God. <laughs> don't do that, right? You don't do that stuff. Tell me your <laughs> shit stories. All, well, I would be here all night. Uh, okay, no, <laughs> only one. <laughs> well, our next guest is like a six foot eight dude, so I'm sure he's got some good ones. Oh my God. <laughs> Well, that's a, I was gonna, like, Bull, tell us your best shit story. Oh, I got a barf story. Let's hear it. Okay, well, oh. once upon a time, Pearl was feeling a bit adventurous. And me and a few of my friends went to said neighborhood bar and had about three shots. Three shots in. For some reason, we started talking about strippers. I was like, I love strippers. Strippers love me. Like, let's go to a strip club. Let's go. Let's go. We have no other freaking, like, what are we going to do? The world's going to end. So we're going to the strip club. Me and my homegirls got our masks on. And then, I mean, Outrageous Pearl took off. And I somehow, all I remember were thongs and dollar bills. And then, like, some black spots in my memory. And then more thongs and dollar bills. And then... Uh, my friends were like, all right, Pearl's drunk. Everyone's drunk. We're going to get an Uber and go back. And I did not want to leave this freaking strip club. So I started running. <laughs> and my friends had to carry me and put me into the freaking Uber. And I ended up throwing up in the Uber. Guys, I'm very classy. This was just a crazy Pearl night. And so I secretly barfed in the corner of the Uber. And the worst part of this whole story is that they charged me around $200. Oh, for wow. the Uber. 
Yeah, they, yeah, they they don't fuck around with that Uber barf. <laughs> yeah, yep. And like the whole night, I was like, that was the best night ever. And then I got the bill in the morning. Oh. Are you? Oh, that's stuff. <laughs> in the Uber, like play Cardi B. Yeah, I probably. <laughs> that's something I would do. Somebody's <laughs> whispering in their chonies right now. <laughs> Is that whispering? I'm, I'm a huge fan of. Uh, my car only, I have a Honda and it takes just CDs and tapes. So I'll buy like CDs from Waterloo Records of like popular crap that's on the radio so I can play it. So I do have a physical Cardi B CD, y'all. <laughs> uh, I'm amazed it worked. Like, what year is your Honda? It's 2007. Ah, I'm so jealous. My 2009. Oh, yeah. <laughs> player sit out on me. <laughs> X in yeah, it. I think I'm gonna get more actual cassette tapes because who the hell uses those anymore? How, you actually have a fucking cassette tape player and it works. It works, and I have and like underneath it has a little square box that you can put like two rows of the cassette tapes. Oh my oh, god! Wow, I have one cassette. Uh, this is what I want to hear. <laughs> Party B. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Party B demo tapes. God, <laughs> they're probably better than anything else. I have like a box of tapes in the attic, like, which I'll take them. <laughs> oh, really? You want some poison? <laughs> oh, <you Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look what the cat dragged in out of my head. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't have any crazy, embarrassing shit stories. I only have stories from other people, and we won't talk about those. <laughs> Their names you could just throw them under the bus nobody would know who they were i mean they would no it's like the occasional like soccer team feud where my friend literally shit in a bag and lit it on fire disgusting threw it at this like rival girl's house who oh, girl did this? <laughs> girl that did this? not a guy it's a girl wow Ooh. yeah Ooh. i have crazy friends too <laughs> that's the thing we don't know vic but they get they get crazy yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> literally shitting in a bag <laughs> that's intense curly pants does not do that stuff <laughs> i'd rather just have a crazy stripper night or something <laughs> just bark call it a day <laughs> yeah extra uber charge they said i just like secretly like looked at them and was like oh no <laughs> and just like, covered my face in the corner <laughs> I didn't even try and roll down a window. It's pretty sad. In fact, maybe I shouldn't have even told that story. I, <laughs> it happens to the best of us, you know. I um, this is your podcast, not my podcast. I would tell my New York story, but to make you feel better. But it's this is your time. This is time for your show. I'm curious about the New York story. <laughs> um. Well, I have a story. I just sprained my ankle this week, y'all. I have a fat sprained ankle, and it's purple. Oh. Okay, see, I, we were talking about bodily functions, and this is how my fucked up brain works anyway. So my head heard sprayed my ankle. No, and- no. I've done that before, <laughs> though, in the wilderness. No, no. This <laughs> goes no, you, that's when you know the girl is drunk, when she's walking down 6th Street with no fucking shoes on, which is like the nastiest thing ever. And then you're like, drunk drunk bar girl just goes like in the parking lot and pops a squat. Like, you're like, yeah, she's drunk. I hope anyway. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't think I've done that. <laughs> okay, so you sprained your ankle. I'll clarify. So. Yes, I did. Oh. At Music Lab, sprinting to the bathroom. That's why this is relevant. I had to go to the bathroom so freaking bad and I was running down the hallway and my boots that I got gifted were a little too big for my feet. So I just rolled my ankle in and like my foot went sideways in my boot and it was terrible. And I was 100% sober. So I felt all the pain, all the pain was there. Um, (laughs) It's been today is like day three that I can actually like walk. Ouch. Okay, that sucks, but it's better than yeah. the other, right? Like, because you made it. I made it. I'm so glad I didn't have a show because, like, using pedals would have sucked for my foot. And uh, I hate being on bed rest. So I had to, like, stay in my bed. And I like to be on the go all the time. So that was really difficult for me. 
Well, we're glad you're feeling better and that your ankle yeah. and that you made it to the bathroom. I and made it. I like, cried a little bit, but I made it. <laughs> now, now you got me thinking. I, I've got so many classic stories, but I'm like, have I ever actually injured myself trying to get to a bathroom? That's a good one. Yeah, that it's really pathetic, honestly. <laughs> the pair of boots didn't fit. So yeah. I am never wearing those boots ever again. Leave them in the Uber next time. Yeah. <laughs> no, what? Yeah, you could have puked in your boot. Problem solved. Could have. <laughs> Damn. I, I feel like there's I regret that so much. <laughs> boot puke. Single <laughs> uh. from Pearl Z. She's taking an interesting career choice here with that boot puke song. Oh, here's another gross thing that happened to me once. I went to a freaking stupid electronic concert at Emo's and walked into the girl's bathroom and someone had thrown up on the ground and I slipped in it. Oh. <laughs> I yep. Somebody didn't actually fall down. I did. Ah. I fell, but I caught myself like, like my leg got in the barf. And then I caught myself where it had ended, thank God. But it was still disgusting, and I left immediately afterwards. I mean, Whoa. I almost threw up. <laughs> oh. oh God! Those that that old emo's place, man. That was that was the place for just all sorts of puke stories. It can get pretty crazy. I, I wonder. Be. I wonder how emo's is doing right now on the on Riverside. That's a really good question. Hey, so you know what? You said you played, what was the last show you, when was the Stubbs gig you played? It was uh, on the 24th. Or no, it was the day before Halloween. Okay. So were bars opened up and then closed again, or have they been open? It's really weird. Like, cause I was going to do. They've been open and they have like a certain like capacity or whatever. People can't like sit next to each other. I personally have not been going, like I'm not bar hopping or anything like that. If I'm going to get a drink, it's somewhere with an outside patio. Um, but at the Stubbs thing, they put all picnic tables on the back uh, or just like in the outside stage area. And people had to raffle for their ticket and then they had to be escorted to their tables. Wow. And, then they can, and then you can only order from your table. But even with that, I mean, Stubbs being outside is a is a big area. I imagine that normally holds. I don't know what the capacity there is. It would have. I mean, yeah, it was so weird seeing it with all tables. I never thought that when I actually got to play a full set outside Stubbs that it would be to a bunch of tables. Yeah, weird, right? I mean, you guys know I saw James Brown at Stubbs, so ever since then I've been like, I want to do a full set. I've sang several times there, like guest singing. Like I did a sold out. A uh, show with the band Mean, who has it's uh, Alex Moss from the Black Angels, and that was really cool. But it was only like a couple songs. So finally, when I'm playing a full hour set, <laughs> everyone's sitting down. <laughs> if that was your dream, like from the minute you touched James Brown, you're like, one day I will be on this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, I, I saw uh, some video of our photos from empire control room and it looks like i mean it's great these places that actually have the outside option because at least they can do anything yeah you know and they have the table it is a kind of a weird thing but at least i assume that's what i'm doing on the 19th oh that's cool and which yeah. band is that again that's with kalu and the electric joint so yeah. do we leave any bands out is there anyone else you play with right now um no I, if I am playing with a band, I'm usually a guest singer. I've been doing a lot of collaborations too with people, which actually I'm very grateful for this pandemic to have allowed me to do that. <laughs> Just yeah. collaborate with people that I wouldn't have had time to do that with. Yeah, I think that's actually one of the weird silver linings. Um, in that. Yeah. yeah. And I've, yeah. And tracking and finally getting all my crap together it would have taken me much longer. So, I mean, I, I might as well just mention it right now. And so you have to put you on the spot. Would you like to collaborate on a song called Boot Puke with me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why not? What we'll do is we'll just sample. We'll, I got the boots and I got the puke. <laughs> yeah, we'll just 
we'll just get a, a sample bank of vomit. <laughs> Run it. Oh through. my god! <laughs> I'll send you a bunch of vomit uh, uh, audio, and you can be like, "Hey, just throw this in Ableton, see what you come up with." I've got, I would do it. <laughs> Beautiful operatic vocals over it. Actually, this is how my weird brain works. Is now I'm starting to go like, oh wait, this is kind of cool. I like the juxtaposition. <laughs> Pearl's gonna be like, okay, so what's his number? So I never answer that text. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's just gonna text and say, <laughs> boot. Dude, if you really did that, I'm gonna send back something cool. <laughs> I I don't think I don't have your number, but I so I just want. <laughs> on in Instagram it's just like hey, boop puke question mark <laughs> <laughs> okay. that's gold that's gold I could sell <laughs> worst decision you've ever made in your career <laughs> yeah <laughs> she was on the voice now she's making boop puke that's right <laughs> I <laughs> <and fall>, of <laughs> <laughs> Well, cool. I think this has been a pretty fun podcast. We always have a good time. You are. Oh, well, yeah. I've been enjoying my time with you guys. You guys rock. Um, I listened to a couple of your podcasts earlier um, the past couple of days. Awesome. What, uh, which ones? The one with, uh, how do I say his name? Ulk, Ork Ellison. How do I say his name? Ulrich. Yeah. Ulrich. Ulrich. Yeah. I played with him a long time, like years and years ago. And I was always curious about his story, so that was kind of cool to listen to. Yeah, um, there's been several people on your podcast that I know. So, yeah, we well, have a ton of. Uh, I, it's awesome. I mean, that, it's that's nice because I don't. I've never gotten a chance to listen to these people's backstories or just you know one on one. So that's cool. And yeah, I love that too because it's like we're all in this community. I mean, you know, we've got guests that aren't in Austin too, but like so many people are musicians in Austin, you know, in Texas and stuff that I've met over the past 10, 15 years. And it's like, what better time than right now? Just like, Hey, let's shoot the shit and, you know, catch yeah. up learn about, you know, whatever. And like with you, you know, we've never really talked, so it's kind of cool to get to know you. And now you kind of know me. <laughs> I think kind of know each other or have heard of or whatever, but like you said, you don't really know that person. So it's kind of cool. Yeah. Thanks for listening. I'm glad you checked it out. And uh, yeah, thank you. Sure. Awesome that you came on as well. You guys are doing a good thing. <laughs> trying to best, we're trying to best. It's really just my secret agenda to try to like get, uh, you know, get hit songs like boot puke with everybody. Oh my God. <laughs> Every single person that comes on the podcast from here on out, I'm like, so we're going to write a song together, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then what I'll do is like with every everyone, I'll be like, pitch me your idea. And whenever they tell it to me, I'm like, ah, no, nah, it's not as good as Pearl Z's. Like, <laughs> this is the, and this is what's going to happen is now it's, been, I'm going to put it on you. Oh man, Pearl had this great idea. She wanted to, no. <laughs> Pearl came to me and she was like, hey, I got this great idea about me puking in my boot in the back of an Uber. <laughs> Still sucks that that happened. Jesus Christ. <laughs> the worst part about it is just having to fucking pay for that shit. That's the worst. Yeah, that's why, I mean, I wouldn't have told the, so the story if I hadn't have gotten that extra charge. <laughs> well, that's what makes it, um... That's know. what makes it an iconic night. Hey, remember that one time? I'll do it again, right? Maybe... I was like, I'm never drinking again! <laughs> uh, somehow I don't think that's held up, has it? How long? How long? No, I'm having a margarita. Well, there you go. All right. All right. We have a we have a really cool uh, CBD cafe actually at the front of Music Lab now. Oh, um, cool. Indigo Cafe, they're awesome actually. I've had some. I'm a can of babe. I help represent their pop ups and stuff. If they go to a, a venue downtown, I like help them educate people on CBD and like what you can use it for, etc. And uh, I used to think it didn't help me whatsoever until I took the like drops for like anxiety purposes. And then I was like, holy crap, like, I'm loosey-goosey, baby. I didn't know I had that much anxiety and crap like that. Um, awesome. But, yeah, it's been really cool uh, working <laughs> with them. But that's – they have CBD-infused margaritas, so I tried one tonight. And? It's really good. Pretty good. Yeah. It's a mango mango margarita. Oh, I love mango. I, I – um. I had so it's been a while since I've been up to that music lab and I totally forgot that you walk in there now and it's got that aura like it's got aura. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
this month. Although I got to say it's kind of changing because there's a lot of like hip hop rapper artists in here right now. There's really barely anyone rocking out. I'm one of the few. And it used to be like every room was a rocking room. The day uh, the days of the stinky metalhead over is I feel like they are and it makes me sad because I grew up practicing at the old music lab. And I was so excited to have this one and like be around more rockers, but my whole hall is rap producers. <laughs> the times they are a changing. Yep. Yeah. Keeping rock alive. You're doing a good thing. You've got the eclectic mix going. I think that's sure do. <laughs> okay. So um, recap, tell us where everybody can find you, your website, your art, uh, mention the bands, just kind of plug everything. Okay. So the band I am currently performing with right now is Kaloon the Electric Joint. Um, you can find me, Pearl Z, on YouTube um, at Pearl Z Music. Um, my new single is called Silence Your Mind. My website is pearlzmusic.com. And you can find my art on my Instagram page, which is at pearl underscore Z music. Um, there is a link in my bio, which will take you right to my art page. And I would definitely appreciate the support. Other than that, um, I believe that's all of my connected links so far. So, yeah, go check it out. I am constantly creating and posting. So, yay! We need like fake applause right here, like at football games nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about uh, CBD, and I was like, "Ooh, that sounds good." Yeah, Victor just went and hit the bong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, use the uh, the the kill cliff stuff is what I use. Oh, nice. Yeah, um, okay. yeah. The whole anxiety thing, you know, kind of just circling back to that. I it's found it very calming. I've got some uh, some other stuff that I use at nighttime, nighttime caps instead of melatonin. Yeah, yeah it's it makes. It makes you realize that you have so much more attention than you are really aware of until it's gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, I mean, this is probably a really dumb question, but is that like different than edibles or like really similar, just in a different form? It's it comes in different forms, but yeah, you you don't feel the same as you do if you take an edible. Like it's not like it doesn't it doesn't get you high, but is it more like? Your, it's it's like all the um not a muscle relaxant, but is it just I think it's more of um I I know for me, like uh you know, with everything going on, it's uh it, it keeps kind of it keeps your mood a little more level, right? So you're not mm -hmm. as anxious, you know, you're not uh, you're like you wouldn't respond you wouldn't respond as snappy or fast. At least I don't. Or like right. you wouldn't you think things through more and you're able to you you don't get sleepy, which is my favorite thing, unless you do have the nighttime capsules, which is a different compound of whatever is in the nighttime capsules. But um Yeah, the, it's like and, a it's not really like a muscle re relaxer, but you know, it helps with your freaking sore muscles. So you technically could call it that, but it's not the same feeling. Whatever. It sounds amazing. I want some. <laughs> You're like, yeah. <laughs> Everybody on Facebook, uh, I'm just using that social platform as the example right now, probably needs that too. Speaking of snappy, right? And just, yeah. Yeah. Kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. The one, the one I have, the drinks I have specifically for with that in there are the, um, the recovery drinks. So if I, oh. if I go and work out and have a pretty hard workout, uh, usually it takes me, a, if I don't drink one, it takes me a long time to recover and like go eat and just do stuff. I'm just dead. But um, yeah, from a recovery standpoint, it just kind of helps out with just getting your body back into, <laughs> back into a check. So. Yeah. And it helps because I'm old. I have body <laughs> aches everywhere. Just, I just want to inject it into my knees. Oh, it works. <laughs> Where do you get that stuff, Vic? Um, the drink I order from killcliff.com, or I think the <laughs> CBD one is killcliffcbd.com. Not a sponsor. 
<laughs> I wish. <laughs> um, the nighttime caps, I'm, I'm trying out this place called Santa Cruz Medical, Santa Cruz Medicinals. Santa Cruz Medicinals. That's and cool. I'm, I just ordered myself and my dogs some CBD pills. <laughs> Dogs. Oh yeah. You got it. I have a great Pyrenees. Oh yeah. I have a great Pyrenees and she has really bad joint problems because she's so tall and lanky. So hopefully this works for her too. (laughs) And because of everything going on and I'm just staying home and just eating everything and packing on weight. uh, Might as well just eat everything healthy. (laughs) Well, that's the problem. I don't. And uh, (laughs) And so the more I eat and the more unhealthy I get, the more I get body aches and knee aches and things like that. But if I do the, uh, take the CBD stuff, then, you know, don't have that problem. Yeah. Man, we should get. Thank God for CBD. Yes. Sponsored by this shit, dude. (laughs) (laughs) I'm ready to plug this product. (laughs) Let's do it. All right, cool. So I think that we're all just going to go do a bunch of CBD. CBD. Right and now. puke in an Uber. Okay. <laughs> I'll see the D later. <laughs> Pearl, Pearl and I are going to get to work on that track. So uh, we'll puke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody post. <laughs> so terrified. Like, It'll oh. be a bop. <laughs> well, thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks for coming on. Best wishes. Rock to- on. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Maybe we'll see you at your show in, uh, in December. Yeah. Rock and roll. Adios. Later on. I fell in way too far.